This is It Was a Thing on TV. Spoiler number one is Dr. Lee Franz. It stinks. What is going on? <laughs> what is going on? Episode 86, Submission 1643, Playboy's Roller Disco and Pajama Party. Playboy's Roller Disco and Pajama Party aired on ABC on November 26th, 1979. Hugh Hefner invites you to Playboy's Roller Disco and Pajama Party with your host, Richard Dawson, and guest stars, The Village People, Chuck Mangione and the Chuck Mangione Quartet. Wayland and Madam, and special surprise celebrities, plus a preview of Playboy's Playmates of the 80s. Well, guys, I got a great idea. I like r- roller skating. I also like pajama parties. But you know wow. what make yeah, but you know what else would be great? Wait wait wait, you didn't say that you like Playboy too. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah. It's a fabric of who we are as Americans. Yeah. You know sad what, as that may sound, yeah. it's true. Yeah. But you know what people loved in the nineteen seventies? An excuse to make the three into an hour-long special during sweeps? Yes, but you know what else they added to it? They felt, hey, Americans love Playboy. Uh-huh. They love roller skating. They oh, love yeah. pajama parties. Oh, but yes. But you know what this special needs, guys? We need disco. How about we have a roller disco pajama party we at the Playboy Mansion, and someone at ABC was like, "That's a good idea. Let's make that an hour-long special." Not only that, let's get our biggest Playboy in the network to host it. Yeah, Dick Dawson himself, my man. Yeah, because <laughs> obviously, 1979, Richard Dawson is on top of the world right now. Family Feud would have been on at, on ABC for what three years at this point? Uh, yeah, roughly. Yeah. So give yeah. or take. Yeah. So obviously, you also had the nighttime version of Family Feud going on at that time. So not only was Richard Dawson the king of daytime television, he was also the king in syndication. Uh huh. Yeah, he he owned television in 1979. It seemed. But also, we should add, this is on ABC. Who was known for their jiggle factor? Think about it. They mm-hmm. had shows like Charlie's Angels. Three's Company. Three's Company. Y- you had a little bit of the jiggle factor in Too Close for Comfort. A little bit. Well, not as much as, say, Three's Company. and. and oh, by the way, Too Close for Comfort would be a year out, though. No, no, it would have been early 80, and this was late 79, so it would have been about a month and a half later. Okay, okay. so so you get what we're trying to... Uh... And, and It's a Living would be a year away. Yeah, mm-hmm. It's a Living would be about a year away. So, yeah, yeah th- this is the perfect place for this type of show. Right at ABC, where you've got a bunch of boobs running around, and that's not even including the long-departed Fred Silverman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's still busy no, he's operating. Going, he's, he's going to screw up NBC right now. He, yep. He's he's probably still busy operating the super train as we speak. Uh, you're not that far off. Well, actually, no, it would have been it would have derailed by now. I'm sorry. No, well, he was playing with the model of the super train in his office. Yeah, that's probably why it ended up in that barn. But more about that on the super train episode back like 80 episodes ago. Back 75 in ep- episodes ago. Episode, yeah. episode 14. There you go. So 72 episodes ago. Yeah. This was 
just like, well, it's Playboy. I think we know what we're going to get into with Playboy. Uh, we're, we're going to have a lot of um, cleavage yes. and a lot of skin. Mm-hmm. And, uh huh. We're going to have a lot of boobs. And, and, oh, yeah. And, and there are models, too. Yeah, yeah, we'll have boobs like uh, Waylon Flowers and Madam and Richard Dawson, but yeah, th- there'll be uh, mammary glands too. Yep, plenty. Yes, and as you heard in the open, this was star-studded. Yep. I mean, we mentioned Waylon Flowers and Madam. Obviously, Hugh Hefner was there. You also had Chuck Mangione. Yeah. Yeah, before he got popular off of King of the Hill. Well, he was already pretty popular, but I mean, this sort of like reeks of like as 70s as you can get. Mm-hmm. You have Chuck Mangione, you have Richard Dawson, you have Waylon Flowers and Madam, and then about two and a half minutes into the show, you see Hugh Hefner poolside or grotto side with some of his models playing backgammon. Oh, yeah, baby. That one's for you, Ben Ingram, if you happen to be watching this. Well, if it's not cribbage, it's, it's backgammon with Ben. Yeah. If, it's not, if it's neither of those, it's bridge. Hmm. Uh, ben likes the finer things in life. Ben is a classy individual, yes. Yeah. And, and Richard Dawson, I mean, he looks like, for lack of a better word, the ultimate playboy. He looks like Hefner's wingman throughout this entire thing. Oh, yes. Just about, yeah. And, He's like, and, and please also remember, th- this is a good year and a half, two years before Dawson got married. Yeah, because uh-huh. he, he met his wife on Family Feud. Yeah, they got married in 81. Yep. It's like, it's like, she, they, it's like her family won the money and Richard Dawson won her. And, and she won his money. If you know what we mean. Yeah, not yeah. wrong. So a uh, roller, so a roller disco, uh, roller disco pajama party. A roller disc. So I'm, I'm still trying to figure this out here. A roller disco pajama party with Richard Dawson at the Playboy Mansion. Yeah, that's exactly that, how it sounds. Well, that's the show. Good night, everybody. No. <laughs> But, but, yeah, this being a variety special in the 70s, we have to have variety acts, don't we? Oh, yes. Well, I mean, if you look at just who's on this, it just reeks of 70s, of late 70s pop culture. We mentioned you know, Chuck Mangione. We mentioned Waylon Flowers and Madam. We mentioned Richard Dawson. We know about Hugh Hefner. The village people were on this, and th- it doesn't get much more late seventies than the village people, obviously. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, going back to what we were talking about in the last episode about the uh, cheerleading championships in nineteen eighty, where there was still a disco effect, even though disco would be dead probably within about three months. Yeah, and then you have oh, now again, this is like peak seventies here. James Con, yeah. Yeah, James Conn, you remember he was in the Godfather movies, yeah. Uh, you had uh, Robert Culp, who yeah. would have been on I Spy, albeit I Spy was well over a decade earlier. Uh, but since we have to talk about Robert Culp, who was on I Spy, I think we have to talk about his other half. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Bill Cosby, who was also on I Spy, was on this. But enough about him because he's yeah. a despicable human being. Yeah. Yes. Oh. But on a lighter note, you know who they had at the at the roller disco pajama party? Who did they have at the roller disco pajama party? They had the San Diego chicken at the roller disco pajama party. Yes, there, they another did. Another fact of the seventies. Oh yes, they did. Ted Giannoulis, the, the San chicken. Diego chicken. Oh yeah, of course. This would be what another like two or three years before the baseball bunch. No, Baseball Bunch was 80, so this would have been oh. right before the Baseball Bunch. So one year, okay, I didn't know Baseball Bunch was at eight, was started in 80, okay. Yeah. Yeah, but oh man, eventually we will get to the Baseball Bunch. That's a show that MLB Network needs to like air. 
Or like oh, revive one day. Oh yeah. Oh absolutely. Well, the problem is they couldn't. Well, they could get the San Diego chicken, but the chicken is so dated, and you've got better mascots nowadays. You could you Gritty. could ha- you could have the Philly fanatic, and you could have Gritty as a guest star. I, I was trying to avoid Gritty just because it's the wrong sport. But you have hey, so many hey, mascots. That's never the wrong sport for hey, Gritty. Hey, NHL Network is owned by MLB Network. They could do a crossover with Gritty. They. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they could. No, I was thinking of other mascots. I mean, you mentioned the Philly Fanatic, and you've got Orbit, who I know Greg absolutely loves. Yeah, Orbit of the Houston Astros. Mm-hmm. And, of course, you've got Slider for the Indians, who's Hugo been around the for 30 years. Don't forget Hugo the Hornet. Oh, that's NBA, but yeah, that could yeah you could have you could have him in a basketball contest or something. Oh, we oh. could go all sorts of cross. M- Mr. Met, how can you forget about Mr. Met? How can Met? you forget Mr. Met and Mrs. Met? Exactly, Mrs. Met. You could you could have the whole Met family. Yeah, you're you're right about that. You've got the uh, the the parrot for the pirates. Oh, I mean, the, the the possibilities go on and on. Yep. You could sort of cross species here, cross sports. You could have the gorilla from the Suns. You could have uh, the bear that uh, was the um, jazz mascot. You could have Greg's favorite, C- Sir Cece. Yeah, you could have Moondog, too. You could have Moondog, too. You could do, a, like, a wrestling mascot match, and you could have Sir Cece and Moondog as, like, a tag team. And, and also, in case you've never noticed, folks, Sir Cece does look like Jay Leno circa 1983. We should also add, besides the San Diego Chicken, uh, one other name, and he was still big in the 70s, in the late 70s, uh, not for his primary reason, but uh, for his secondary uh, purposes, Jim Brown. Yeah. Jim Brown? Remember Jim Brown back in the 60s and 70s after he retired from football? He was in movies like The Dirty Dozen, Ice Station Zebra, mm-hmm. The Running Man. Yeah, remember his, his fireball in the Running Man. Yeah, who was in the Running Man? Yeah, Jesse Ventura. No, um, Jim Brown, and the host of this special guy, yeah, Richard oh, Dawson. Yeah. Come on! Another thing that Jim Brown was in, which all three of us just discovered tonight, and is definitely going to be a future episode, is the two-hour third season premiere of Chips, which was about a roller disco. And yes, Jim Brown was in that too. He couldn't get enough yep. roller discos in 1979. Jim Brown really likes to roller disco, doesn't he? Uh, I think he was there more for the ladies than anything else. He was still a player back in 1979. He may have been married, though, but the, the, the chicks dig Jim Brown mm-hmm. 15 years after retiring. And, of course, it would be, what, another 17 years before Jim Brown and Morris attacks? Yep. One of the great underrated Tim Burton movies, Mars Attacks. I love Mars Attacks. Yeah, it had Natalie Portman in it. Of course, it can't go wrong with that. It's like, of course, you love Mars Attacks. It has that, Natalie Portman in it. Yeah, take that, Scott. So yeah, this was just like gratuitous TNA. They showed footage from Hef's birthday party, which was Olympic themed. And that's where the uh, San Diego Chicken came into play, even though you know, he's really not much of a, uh, an Olympic mascot, per se. But uh, they, they showed the uh, playmates doing all sorts of events on the medal stand, showing off their medals. And Richard Dawson offering corny commentary. Oh, well, look at her. She won the gold medal, and she's going to go get it bronze. Uh, oh, 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 oh yeah, Richard. I, this isn't the A-plus material that he used on Match Game and, and on Family Feud. No, this is the leftovers that uh, gets him by on uh, specials like this. This is like, the, this is like the oil drilling on Jack Ward's hair joke that he used in the Family Feud pilot. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, you're, you're not wrong. But then they brought out a whole bunch of cheerleaders. And also... They had a marching band there, a collegiate marching band. Oh, how, how wonderful. Yeah, there's no marching bands in the Olympics, though. Only, in, only during the opening. and yeah. They got to uh, perform to something, right? Yeah, you have marching bands in the opening ceremonies. 
Well, you know what? You know, do they? I, 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 well, I do only, think only if the closing ceremonies had up with people involved. I don't know. Yeah, Let I was going to say, I thought, I, I thought everything uh, at the opening ceremonies of the Olympics, that was pre-recorded, and they just uh, brought them in in order of uh, alphabetical order based on the language yeah. of the home country. Yeah, but they and, have, and like... Greece first. But I don't remember them ever having, like, marching bands. I thought yeah, they, they probably pre-recorded. Did. Yeah, they just they did. Have, they have like all sorts of festivities at the opening ceremonies. Oh yeah, fair enough. But then Richard shows us the new addition to Hef's compound. I mean, it's more than a mansion. I mean, the mansion is maybe just the house itself. Just the, the, the what's new on the Playboy properties? Well, it's 1979, and gosh darn it. The second word in this special is roller. He built a roller rink. What? Well, you're, you're a few hefter. You can afford to build a roller rink. Well, yeah, that's that's on par with an eccentric billionaire in Japan building a kitchen in his castle. So, yeah, they show uh, all, all sorts of playmates roller skating around the roller rink, but also they end up on his tennis court. It looks like a tennis court. I don't see any nets though, so maybe it's it, it's laid out like a tennis court in case the roller skating fad dies. I don't know. Because why not? Mm-hmm. And then we have Richard Dawson talking with Heth for a little while, but then we get to oh, it is tennis. It looks like it. Uh, well, they're playing tennis. Uh, this may be on the same court. I mean, maybe they put the uh, the nets in. But one of the people who's playing tennis, again, it doesn't age well because it's Bill Cosby. Uh, uh, well, uh, all we can say is Bill Cosby played a tennis coach on I Spy. Well, yes, he did. That's actually a very good point. Yeah. And then it's That's back all, to more. All we can say and all that we really want to say. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's back to more roller skating. And they're skating on the tennis court. They, they, they must have removed the net for the tennis court uh, when they were roller skating because they're back on the tennis court now, roller skating. And, of course, it's just a bunch of females in minimal apparel, lots of bikinis, lots of swimsuits, lots of leotards, and they're just, well, they're skating. Yeah. And, just- and please remember as you watch this, all these people are at least your mom's age. Yep. Mm, yeah. If not your grandmother's age, they're at least in their sixties now. Boy, I hope, you, I hope you guys can sleep well at night knowing that. Yeah. You're looking at these women saying, "Oh my gosh, they're so amazingly beautiful." Well, guess what? They're all friggin' retired now. Yeah. Oh, and now they're at the now they're in the disco inside the mansion. And apparently, Richard didn't get the memo that it's a pajama party because he's in a tux. Maybe he sleeps in a tux for all we know. Yeah, maybe he could. Maybe he does. He so, well, remember, it's here's the king Dawson. of television in 79. He can afford to sleep in a tux. And if any, Richard Dawson, for Christ's sakes. And if anyone can get away before wearing a tux at a pajama party in 1979, it's Richard Dawson. Or he could just be, you know, giving style points to a future Barney Stinson. Like, remember, he has... Barney Stinson has... A pajama suit. And remember, Barney Stinson does think his dad's Bob Barker. So I guess maybe Richard Dawson, he thinks is his uncle. Oh, also we should add the length of time they showed roller skating uh, between the end of the tennis match and the start of the, the nighttime disco mm-hmm. was almost eight minutes in length. That was a lot of skating. That was a lot of gratuitous TNA action. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, you had to get through about eight minutes of roller skating. Not that that may have been terribly difficult, but just, again, remember these women are at least your mom's age, if not your grandmom's age. Oh, boy. Oh, they're def- Some of them are definitely, like, close to my mom's age. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, at the pajama party... Yeah, you, you've got Richard Dawson wearing the tux, and there's Hef wearing his red silk pajamas. As one does 
at the plate. As one does in a Hefner pajama party. Exactly. And of course, apparently Madam also didn't get the memo because she's in a bow for stole. Yeah. Oh, and uh, yeah, just a little comedy <laughs> thing. Uh, there's three people who don't know who Richard Dawson is. One of them comes up to him, thinks he's a waiter. Oh, hey, could you refill my wine glass? It's a Sibley Beaujolais, yeah. Okay, you obviously were not watching ABC Daytime in 1979. Yeah. And then, oh my gosh. One of Waylon Flowers' puppets, not Madam, Oh, oh no. Learning no, no. with oh, the no. leather man from the village people. Oh no. I know which one you're talking about. I'm almost afraid you oh. I'm, I'm almost afraid. I got I have to cut this off like right now. Hold up. We cannot Hold talk up. about this right now. Yeah, but the, the, the big takeaway from that is hey, hey Waylon Flowers puppet. He's not into you. He's interested in your brother. Ha 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 ha. I'm not wrong, though. Now, wait a second. And then there's uh, Madam again. Now she's got a silver wig on. I've yeah. never seen, seen her wear a silver wig. Is that her uh, pajama party outfit? I'm guessing it is. Or, or is she trying to impersonate Brett Summers there? Yes. <laughs> yeah, probably because Richard's there. Yeah, it depends on uh, what type of terms he left with... Uh, on match game 78 because she was still towing the company line still on the show at that point yeah but then oh now we get to the meat and potatoes of the pajama party it's time for the village people yeah and i see i see and you know what the cop is uh, the traffic cop is on the stage doing what traffic cops do yeah if you if you've ever seen the village people perform to this day Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. He he's yeah. he's down there doing what traffic cops do. Hey, gosh, I hope that's a nightstick. <laughs> and they're actually singing a song. They're not singing one of the popular songs. They're not singing YMCA or In the Navy. This is a song I've never actually heard of. It is, okay. It is a song called Rock and Roll is Back Again. Remember... This is four months after Disco Demolition Night. Yeah, and also we should add that even though this aired November of 79, it looks like this was recorded late October of 78 from the research we did. So were they sitting on it for an entire year or maybe the article that we are citing had the wrong date? Maybe. Who knows? As we mentioned on the previous episode about the 1980 college cheerleading championship disco was uh, a dying breed in late 79 early 1980 apparently rock and roll was back again and disco was dead next um, up R richard dawson is at a table with the 1980 playmates yeah and uh, if anybody has a list of said playmates one of the names of the playmates uh, during this segment, uh, was Playmate of the Month in August of 79, which actually makes me think that the uh, that record date wasn't late 78 like we saw, late October 78. It was probably late October 79. Uh, and she was actually the Playmate of the Year in 1980, is somebody by the name of Dorothy Stratton. And if that name rings a bell, well, she happened to be um, murdered uh, in August of 1980. So we're talking literally like about nine months after this was recorded. And she was all 20 years old at the time. Yeah, it was wow. very tragic. Yeah. Yeah. But she was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, she was, I believe, dating at the time uh, the noted director, Peter Bogdanovich. I think you may be right about that. Mm -hmm. And then there's uh, a photo shoot. Several yep. photo shoots, actually. Yep. And of course, they have to be tastefully edited for television. Yes. Can't show a nip. No. No. Yeah, we see a lot of footage of them walking on the beach, 
wearing their bathing suits and we see the photographers getting all prepared and yeah, we, we see some very, uh, well, let's say reasonably tasteful uh, images, stuff that we can show on primetime on network television. Yeah, I've I never see seen a Ferrari do that before. No. I'm assuming this would have aired at what, 10 o'clock? Oh, this had to be at 10 o'clock. Then. Obviously. Actually, uh, if I remember correctly, I believe the original advertisement that we saw, it said 8 o'clock. Oh. Oh. Well, now again, is it 8 o'clock Mountain or is it 8 o'clock Easter? Because mm. mm. what city did you say you saw this ad in? It was at, at the Super 70 Sports Twitter. But, but, but did you? I, I thought you identified what TV station it was on. Oh, oh! It was on the uh, the TV station. It was on the archive dot org link. Let me look. Yeah. Anyway, while he's looking, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up. Okay, it's nine okay. p.m. That that may be okay. nine. nine so that may be yeah. nine central. Um, yeah, okay, it's uh, WXYZ TV in Detroit, and it aired at nine o'clock. So that would be what? No, well, it's, it well the bumper has like eleven o'clock action news update. So I'm okay. going to guess it's 10 o'clock. Okay. Okay. Uh, and yeah, WXYZ in Detroit, that would be Eastern time zone. Meanwhile, it turned into a big dance party with the leather man grinding on a lovely lady and yeah. Mickey and a Mickey Mouse pair of twins. But hold up, guys. <clears throat> Did you notice the music that was being played in the background? What is the music playing in the background? Oh, I showed this to Mike. Oh, no. No. Chico, Chico, you should have instantaneous regrets. No. That's right, people. Oh, boy. That's right, Future people. Future installment. Making it. Making it. Yep. The By theme. David Naughton. The theme song to making it starring David Nolan. Because of course, because, because ABC in 1979. Well, well, this was November of 79, so making it would have long since been canceled. Oh, yeah, but yeah. that song, that song will live forever. Yes, but guys, I got a question. Do you think at the roller disco pajama party they were watching footage? Of the poker game from Super Train at the oh, God. party. <laughs> hey, hey guys, Rebecca Balding's in the poker game. She was on making it. I can't argue his logic. No, he's not wrong there. Yeah. Uh, well, remember that making it did hit the Billboard 100 uh, around the time the TV show uh, debuted uh, in March of uh, '79, and it did peak at number five. In July uh, of 1979. Okay. So that actually also confirms that the article we saw that said it was recorded late October of 78 was factually incorrect because or making was, it hadn't been released at the time. Or was a typo. Yeah, or, probably. Well, well it, it was a mistake or a typo, yeah. But, but yeah, it was definitely done like Halloween of, of 79. So there you go. And I wonder if it was a Halloween thing because everybody was dressed up for the, well, or dressed up. And, and the other man is talking to not Madam again. That's about as close we're to a woman as he'll get that night. We're, we're just going to call that puppet not Madam. Yeah. The, the anti Madam, yeah. That's that the anti Madam. That, that would be an appropriate uh, term, I think, to use. Yeah. Uh, because, uh, and also the anti madam is talking to Jim Brown. Okay, there we go. Eh, I'm eh, done. Eh, I, I'm eh, just gonna hold up. Hands up. I'm done. And, and she's done. talking. And she's talking to the one lever guy from the village people. Oh boy. Well, well. Also, I'm gonna just say if you saw how she was downing that drink, yeah. And don't tell me there's no sexual implication with what she's doing with her uh, mouth. Oh, yeah. I know what she's That's, doing. There's nothing sexual about that. Nothing sexual at all. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I Exactly. Hmm. Well, we got another uh, village people number. Mm -hmm. 
Who are they doing? Are they doing a well-known song this time? No, they're not doing Macho Man or In the Navy or YMCA. It's another. Oh, well, it's on. another one of those songs that was the eighth or ninth single on an album or something. Okay. Yeah. While the Village People song is going on, Madam and the, as we call her, anti-Madam, they actually met each other. Uh, oh no! Yes, Madam was wearing her silver wig we talked about earlier, and she was drinking. Looks like. Some well, some mixed beverage. Uh, I, I gather it was some sort of scotch, based on what the anti madam said. And she, uh, the anti madam, basically like st- like sticks her head in the drink, saying, "Oh, you're as old as the drink that you're drinking." And clearly, Waylon Flowers was doing the anti madam because Madam didn't say anything here. So there's clearly a second puppeteer working Madam, and. For a brief moment at the end, you could see Waylon Flowers' arm extending as the anti Madam slams Madam into the drink. Oh yeah, this, boy. This is not unlike whenever you see Triumph the Insult comedy dog and you can like partially see Robin yeah, Spider. By the way, the yeah, but the thing is, is that, but, 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 yeah, but the thing is, that's funny, number one. And also, I think if you see Robert Smigel's arm, that, that almost like adds to the humor. And I, I don't think I've ever seen, you know, uh, Waylon Flowers' hand appear in any of these segments. I, by, the way, the, been, oh, by the way, the song, the song, ready for the 80s. Oh, yeah, they were ready for the 80s, all right. Yeah, they weren't ready for the 80s. That, that, that's the joke. <laughs> Thank you, Big Bade. <laughs> I think that's what they end the show on, actually, is the Village People number ready for the 80s yeah but all uh, and and, re- and oh here's how good ready for the 80s was <laughs> and, and 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 we could actually realistically do like an ebay prices right here but well we'll do it more like we're gonna do card sharks instead oh. okay Okay, I have, uh, according to Wikipedia, the information about Ready for the 80s. It hit the Billboard 100. I want you to, well, let's see who's closer. Where on the Billboard 100 did Ready for the 80s get up to? What was its peak position? And I'll start with Chico. Oh, God. Ready for the 80s. I don't think Village People was ready for the 80s. So for them to say ready for the 80s is a little kind of sort of... Uh, uh, what was the word I'm looking for? Uh, anachrony- an- anachronistic. Okay. So I'm going to go... and I'm going to say... And this is the Billboard Hot 100, right? Yes, this did hit the, the Hot 100. Okay, and this is the peak position, right? Peak position. Okay, so I'm going to go 36. 36. Okay, Greg. I'm going to go with 100. <laughs> it's just who's closest. It's not necessarily who's closest without going over. But Okay, okay so 36 and 100. 100? Dang. Yeah, I, I'm... I... There had to be a reason you brought this up, so I figured 100. Well, the, the reason I brought it up is because I actually see information about this, unlike the other song we mentioned earlier, and it actually only reached 52. Oh. It reached only number 52 on the Hot 100. Uh, apparently, they weren't ready for the 80s. No. No. Yeah, and the only place that it hit the charts was in the United States. Ooh. Ooh. Not, not in Australia, Belgium, Canada, Germany, Ireland, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Norway, Sweden, UK. Nope. Just here, just up to 52. So definitely not its uh, most memorable song. And this is sort of telling. Right. Um, Ready for the 80s was the last song uh, to hit the Hot 100 in the United States by the Village People. Wow. 
So uh, yeah, they they may have been singing about being ready for the '80s, but clearly they weren't. No. Well, "Can't Stop the Music" did uh, peak at number one in Australia, uh, but uh, yeah, that was the last hey. Hot 100 hit for the Village People. Hey, hey, those Australians—they were like, you know, this Steve Gutenberg guy. He's got he's got something. Yeah. I'll- I thought you were going to say crikey. Crikey. So we got, we got, we get to the ending. We got, we got Chuck. He's on his, he's on his trumpet. You no, know, it's a flugelhorn. Get it right. Oh, same thing. Trumpet, flugelhorn, whatever. In 18 years, he's going to be on King of the Hill, so. Yeah, this is true. Anywho, uh, so Richard and Dorothy are chatting it up. Getting ready to wind down the night. Roll credits. And speaking of the credits, uh, a couple of names I recognize. And uh, our our friends who enjoy old uh, game shows, especially from the 70s, will notice who the director is. Tom Turbovich. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who was on Few. I believe he had the, uh, the same position on Few previous installment few okay but also one of the writers this might be a little bit of a stretch but if you're a fan of match game back in the early 70s talking like 73 74 75 uh one of the people who showed up occasionally was an elder an elder was a writer for this special that explains some of Richard Dawson's uh, nice little quips there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Realistically, you're, you're not wrong. Yep. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, Tom Turbovich was director on f- oh, many things. Few, the dinosaurs. Oh, my God. Who doesn't love dinosaurs? Not I the mama. Dino- not the mama. Exactly. By the Yeah. By the way, the... Uh, the fina- the uh, disturbing finale of dinosaurs that's going to be on the list. Should we include it on the list? Actually, no. That's not going to be on the list. Good. That's a little. Uh, it's a little depressing. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. See, I, 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 uh, Tom Turbovich has been around for ages. I mean, going back to 1975, and still active as of 2010. Wow. So, I mean, that's, that's a good that's a good career. years. That's a good career. That's a oh, good yeah. career. And he also did future installment Muppets Tonight. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, I love, yeah. I love Muppets I, Tonight. I like Muppets Tonight. It's okay. I it's, like it's, it. It's way better than the Muppets series ABC did like five or six years ago. And, and it's better than Muppets Now. Yeah, I've not heard good things about Muppets now. Well, that's the Playboy Roller Disco and Pajama Party. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Man, what can we say about this? I know what I can say about this. Go for it. It's time for eBay Price is Right! Oh, Oh, no! I have in my hand here a picture from Movie Material Store of Richard Dawson and Hugh Hefner. This is a this is a publicity still at the table where I guess they're speaking to another playmate. And it it's not marked in any way and there's no sort of uh autograph by it. But it's state, but it's a seven by nine, publicity still, original, mint condition. Uh, Mike, you are tallest, so you go first. I wish I was shorter. Um, okay, since that's like peak seventies, I'm gonna say that would be twenty one ninety five. Okay, Greg. 
twenty-two dollars. Yeah, of course you would. And oh, look, you both overbid. Oh, oh thank you, hallelujah. Okay, low. This bid is twenty one ninety nine. Mike ninety five. Uh, ninety five. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's drop it two bucks. Nineteen ninety five. Okay. Uh, Greg. One dollar, Bob. <laughs> Call me Bob again. Anyway, the actual buy it now price for this Richard Dawson Hugh Hefner Playboy Roller Disco original photo. Ugh. For the want of a nickel, Mike, twenty dollars. Wow. Well, now I think we can officially close up. Do, do you have anything that you actually want to say about this? Well, uh, go it, ahead. Had, it had disco, it had roller skating, it had pajama parties, it had the village people, it had Waylon and Madam, you had Richard Dawson, you had Hugh. But you know what they all had in common, guys? One night on ABC in November of 1979, all of those, they were just things on TV. Oh, but yes. Well, before we all go take a nice cold shower, let's just remind you, we have a website, and we have over 85 episodes there. It was a thing on TV.com. And we're all over the socials at It Was a Thing on TV. You can find us on Facebook and on Twitter, and on Instagram, and on Tumblr, and there's the Discord. Oh, my. This was this was a very funkadelic last two episodes between the 1980 Collegiate Cheerleading Championships and the Playboy Roller Disco and Pajama Party. Uh, and we're going to stay in the late 70s next week. We are? Oh. What do we got we, next week? Y- yes, we are going to uh, w- you said, what do we have next week? I'd like to know what we have next week. Oh, yeah. Next week, who boy. We're going to cover a lot. Uh, there's not a whole lot to say about it because, really, the shows we're going to cover, at least on the first episode, are essentially kind of sort of one in the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're like one in Dunners. Uh-huh. Yeah, more or less. And, and the second episode is probably one of the – most popular spinoffs of all time that failed. Oh, yes. Ah, right. Definitely the most popular spinoff that failed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we say popular loosely. Well, y- yes and no. But uh, still, it was a very popular spinoff, and still it didn't last long. And no, we're not talking about the Ropers. Oh. I wish we were talking about the Ropers. Oh, we, should, we to need to about talk about the Ropers. Seriously. Sometime next year, we got to talk about the Ropers. We definitely we'll, need to talk about the Ropers sometime next year. We'll put it on the schedule, yes. But uh, for now, don't forget, please, rate and review, like and subscribe, share, because sharing is caring. And also, in addition, don't forget, we're counting down to 100 episodes now. We are... 14. We are, yeah, I was just getting a gulp and I'm sorry. We're Gil Hodges away from 100. We, we, yeah, we're 14 episodes away from 100, uh, and we're going to have some big stuff coming. Uh, and that's going to be, uh, oh, this could be about uh, late in the first week of October. So that's only realistically about uh, a month and a half away at this point. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, not going to tell you what's going on there, but uh, we do have a special 100th episode planned. Uh, we have uh, some stuff coming, uh, uh, some big stuff coming. And uh, I know Greg's working on something too related to the past hundred episodes. So yeah, that'll be a nice culmination, a nice event celebrating just about a one year anniversary at that point, because we would have started in October of, of 2019. So we're, we're getting to the century mark. We can be syndicated then. Woohoo! Yay. Oh, we are syndicated because this is a podcast. So, no, never mind. Oh. But until next week, as always, we thank you for listening. I, I thank Chico and I thank Greg for their uh, participation and assistance as always. And I'm Mike, and we will talk to you next week with two fresh installments of It Was a Thing on TV. Row! On your marks. Get set. Killian. I'll be back.
only in a rerun. Go!